Hi everyone. So thank you for joining us today. Um, I'll just give it a minute for everyone to get, get themselves online properly. Um, so this webinar today is going to be on careers and employability. Um, it'll last about an hour until about 1pm. We might finish a little bit early, um, but we probably won't run over that time. Um, so we're going to have a presentation on careers and employability based on our business school specific employability services. Um, that'll be done by my colleague Kirsty, as you can see. Give a nice wave. Um, and then following that, we'll have a few slides on how you can work with businesses in the business school whilst you're doing your degree. And that will be presented by our my colleague Stephen, who is also there. Stephen can give a wave. <laughs> Um, but and then furthermore, we're also joined by my colleague Ruta, who is here to help with any questions. Ruta has experience working in our central career service and currently works in the student recruitment team in the business school. Um, and then we've also got one of our current students, Miku, who's joining us to offer some insights from a student's perspective on using the career, career service in the business school. So if everyone's happy um we'll get started if you have any questions feel free to just pop them in the chat try and send them to everyone if you send them directly to myself or router we will just answer them to everyone so if you can keep it kind of so that everyone's involved um if we have a lot of questions we might answer them as we go along um but we'll do a q a at the end as well so if you have any questions and you want to hang on to them we'll have time for that at the end so i will hand over to kirsty to present Thank you, Lottie. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. We always appreciate you giving up the time um, to come and hear us talk to you. We hope that the information that we're going to provide you today is going to be really informative. Um, all I would add to, um, to what Lottie said about asking questions is, can you try and keep it to today's topic? Um, you will find that you're going to be invited to a number of other webinars on various different topics um, because we know that there's quite a lot of information that we're going to give you. Um, so today, if it's anything about careers and employability, please absolutely ask those questions. Um, if it's anything outside of that topic, um, then you know we'll give you an email address that you can write to us. In fact, you can see it on the front slide here. You can write to us separately um, or you, know, you can wait to come to one of the other webinars and we will be able to answer those questions in more detail in the future. So let's get started. Um, I am Kirsty Setz Clark. I'm one of the international student recruitment managers um, for Newcastle University Business School. I may have met you in your country at some point during this last academic year, or potentially when you were thinking of coming to start studying with us. My role is to travel around the world, I'm very lucky, talking to students who are interested in coming and studying with us. And I know that from my meetings with you all, um, obviously the end game is, am I going to be employable? What careers are available to me? And so today's session is about our uh, careers team and, you know, the, the different things that they can offer you um, and also, you know, future employability options. So as a student at Newcastle University Business School, you will have full access to both our business school careers advisors, but also the central career service who are based in Kingsgate and they are part of student services. So there is an entire floor dedicated to the careers team um, and our our bespoke careers in, um, colleagues are based both here at the business school and also at Kingsgate so they're open to having meetings in both locations um, and they split half and half. Now as a university we are one of the largest careers teams uh, in the UK higher education sector and we are award winning. We take a lot of pride in what we do and I know that um, my colleagues who work in the careers team do spend a lot of their own time doing continual professional development so they are up to date with all the best and newest topics to help you guys when it comes to advising you when you join us. Um, there is dedicated support within the school, like I said, um, it's more specialized careers uh, advice and guidance around the specific programs that we have and potential career choices that link within the business environment. Um, and obviously, post-graduation, there's also ongoing support for at least three years um, after you've left us. So it's that reassurance that, you know, you can still access the support and, you know, if it's if you're going to change direction or if you just need a little bit more guidance or if you're still making those decisions on your career path. 
Um, the, the career service down in the reception, we recently had a new refurb at the business school and the, um, there's a career section right in, in the reception area as you come in and they also have a separate room set aside for any one-to-one -one meetings that they're going to have. Um, and certainly when, you know, when I'm walking through the information that they provide you is always up to date. Um, there's usually someone sat there if you just want to do a drop-in and you can arrange to have those consultation meetings with them. So this is the, the school's careers team. Um, we've got Jack Robinson, who um, we're happy to say is on maternity leave. She's just had a little baby. So um, she is currently taking a break and looking after her new little one. We have Kian O'Sullivan, Joe Craggs, Jen Simpson, and Paul Campbell. Um, and Jen and Paul work closely with our corporate relations team to hopefully connect you with relevant industry contacts. So there they are. And the employer, uh, sorry, the employability journey. Um, so this is, this is quite a busy slide um, that we are recording this. So you can come back and watch this again if you are interested, but we have, um, we call it the journey. There's four different steps within that journey. And depending on where you're at, what stage you're at, then um, the, the careers planning team can help you uh, you know, at, at whatever point that you are. So in the skills development sessions that they provide for you, um, they work closely with academic staff and industry professionals, and that ensures that they're presenting you with opportunities to extend your skill set and stay ahead of the competition. So technical skills such as using um, key software, such as Tableau or Photoshop, uh, keeping updated with industry techniques and approaches, for example, agile project management, um, or even developing the softer skills that you know, are required within businesses like time management, team working, presenting, you know, the resilience of being in the workplace. Um, Step three, the industry insights It is exactly as it suggests. There is a wealth of opportunity um, that our careers team put on for you. And it's to make sure that, that we are connecting you with the right people and um, putting on panel events, competitions, there's recruitment workshops, um, and there's, there's lots of different opportunities to, um, to network, but also to, you know, to ask those questions of the industry professionals. You know, is it, is it, actually an industry that you want to go into you know you know you can use these times to find out who you do want to work for but also who potentially you know you don't want to work for it's it's about industry attracting you um as a professional graduate as much as you sort of wanting to be employed by them and now number four is direct access to all of the latest opportunities for gaining work experience whether that's volunteering internships um, and of course, the all important graduate roles or graduate schemes that you might be going into. So just to let you know what you can expect from the careers team, um, there is one to one support. Uh, it's bookable. Uh, so you can book one to one sessions with them or you can offer drop ins. Um, there is in person, there's online and these are available every weekday. So um, it, that's about getting started with career planning. Is, is it making your choices? Is it filling in application forms because you've seen jobs that you're interested in? Um, preparing for those recruitment processes, but also when you are made those job offers, um, you know, what is it that you're going to be doing with them? There's weekly workshops that, that we carry out in person. Um, topics include such Things such as, um, you know, the strategies and how you would go about doing a job search, writing your CVs or resumes, um, using utilizing LinkedIn um, and how it is important as a, as a social media platform to enable you to network and get to know job opportunities that are out there. But also, you know, interviews um, and how to, you know, how to interview. Is it nerves? Is it about how to respond to certain questions. Um, you know, there's there's certain themes that go through different interviews. And if you've never done one, um, then, you know, being put through interview practice is a good way of preparing for, for taking part in them in real life. There is also a Canvas page, which is our online platform that you also use for your, uh, your learning um, during your academic classes. Um, and we use this for our careers team as well. So this is where we would advertise any vacancies, any events that are taking place, whether internal or external. 
key resources that we might think would be interesting for you. Um, we do targeted emails so that if anything's coming up, you know, it's all it's worth keeping an eye on your emails for anything coming from the careers team, um, but also the contact information of the careers team as well. You know, if you if you want to get in touch with them directly. We do send out newsletters um, as well as the as the targeted emails. We try to keep you up to date with everything that is going on, um, whether it's something, that, like I said, that we're holding internally um, within the business school or the, or the wider university, or whether it's uh, recruitment events that employers are putting on themselves. So the careers hub, uh, I spoke about this a little bit earlier, but this is a picture of the careers hub. It has been refurbished, um, so it looks a little bit fresher than this. Um, and it is uh, an area where you can book in to, to speak to our team um, on a one-to-one -one basis. You can sign up to events, but it's also where we advertise the latest vacancies that are applicable to our business school students. Um, so the resources that we have, for example, is the Times Top 10 uh, Graduate Employer Guides are there for you to take away. Um, there's uh, takeovers where employers come into the school, they'll set up their stands, um, you know, they'll be available throughout the mornings or the different afternoons from, you know, the smaller medium enterprises right up to the larger recruiters, you know, they, they come, they want to meet our graduates, uh, you know, they want to tell you about what it's like working either within the industry in general or for their company, um, you know, so we do utilise that, that uh, area of the reception quite considerably. Um, once you have registered as a student, um, you will have access to the, the My Career University portal. Um, so this is a key resource area um, for everything related to careers. Um, you know, there's a booking and a sign up system for your, uh, for your meetings. Um, you can search for all the different vacancies. That is not just vacancies post-graduation, but that's also internships, any volunteering opportunities, part-time work that might be offered, again, wh whether that's university part-time work or whether that's in external employers, um, and once again, those all-important graduate roles. Now, we do have quite a postgraduate focus. Um, so everything so far is relating to our um, standalone careers off offer um, outside of your degree. Um, but of course, we also offer plenty um, that you can get involved in throughout your academic studies. Um, so you've got guest speakers, alumni panels, uh, challenges or competitions that are held with um, other universities or that are sponsored by different, um, you know, different companies, for example. Um, the, the interventions differ by program. So they are tailored to your specific course and subject area. Um, so that means there is a lot more bespoke for what you are interested in. Um, you know, we've got guest lectures from industry professionals, uh, different professional bodies. So if you're doing an accounting program, for example, you know, are you wanting to become a member of a different professional body? Are you want to talk to them about, um, you know, the advantages of being a member of their professional bodies and working up, um, you know, from, from joining to becoming like a higher level member? And again, what those advantages are. Um, the competitions and the case competitions uh, look really, really good, your resume and also your LinkedIn profiles. Um, you know, it's a way of showcasing to employers that you haven't just come and done your academic studies. You have also, um, you know, taken part in those extracurricular activities. You're, you're a well-rounded person. You've got those interests outside of study that are still related to the subject that you're interested in. Um, and of course, we've got our alumni network um, you know, thousands of students globally who are still interested in um, talking about their experiences, not just about their studies, but also of how their studies have benefited them, um, you know, moving forward in the careers, the links that they've had through being a, an alumnus um, of Newcastle University Business School. So, um, you know, it's about it's about taking part all those opportunities. I'm going to talk a lot about you have to take part in those opportunities that we offer you. Um, you know, we want to make you as employable as possible. Uh, you know, these these are things that that you know we will share with you. It's obviously up to you to take part in those opportunities. So, we talk about future focus, um, and you know, this is something that we put on every single year. 
Um, we it's a it's a valuable event. It's the opportunity to talk to different uh, industries. Um, this gets put on at, in our um, Helix site, uh, and you get to talk to lots and lots of different employers from lots of different industries and sectors. Um, it's you know it's whether you want to you know you you might be doing accounting, but you might want to go into more of a, a business sector um, rather than go into one of the big four for example, you know, so it's about getting to, like I said earlier in the presentation, narrow down not only who you want to work for, um, but also potentially who you don't want to work for. So you'll be able to fam familiarize yourself with their recruitment processes. So is it going to be a panel interview? Is there going to be a workshop? Is there going to be a presentation? Is there going to be an assessment center? Um, you know, talk to them about the possibilities for uh, progression throughout their throughout your career um, so all the details when this is being planned all these details are going to be you know they are shared um, throughout the the year um, and the future focus uh, summer support is like we said it's done throughout the summer um, and this last little uh, infographic that has come up just shares the different opportunities that you would have to to talk to various industry professionals um, I'm now going to hand over to Stephen, who is our corporate development manager. Stephen, if you want to do a, an, um, oh, you've requested remote control. Honestly, the technological whiz that we can have, um, hopefully that will work for you now. That's great. Thanks very much, Kirsty. Let me just uh, test. Yeah, all, all good. Thank you very much. Um, so, yes, thanks um, everyone for attending today. I'm Stephen Sadi, corporate um, development manager at the business school. Uh, my role is really to coordinate how we work with external organizations, particularly when it comes to um, inner curricular engagement, uh, extracurricular and also research side as well. So really the full sort of range of, of engagement opportunities, often obviously working very closely with our careers team. Um, so for this session, I'll, I'll talk predominantly about how um, we work with external organizations to provide opportunities for you on your course to apply your learning and understand more about the, the business environment um, that you're looking to, to enter. Um, so yeah, that's in a nutshell what we do as a team. Um, I'll talk about a few of those different opportunities. Um, I wanted to start with guest lectures, which is obviously something um, Kirsty touched on a little bit already, but to provide a bit more insight into, into what they are and, and the sort of range of, of speakers and opportunities that we've got. Um, uh, this slide summarizes some of some of the work we do um, in relation to securing those guest lectures. So um, every uh, program will have guest lecture opportunities. We really encourage you to take them. As Kirsty says, I think there's there's a number of benefits. It's a great opportunity to get insights from industry that you might be interested in working in. Quite often, um, the individuals who come in will also talk about their own career journey and how that's progressed. And and I think that can often be quite an inspiring or useful. A useful story to, to hear. Um, it's also good to understand about the business landscape or that particular sector. Um, and I think it's also great for your personal network. Often it's a good opportunity to, to meet people and, and try and build your own network, which I think is a, a really vital thing to do um, while you're studying as well. Um, so as, as you can see here, uh, in the last academic year, just just um, just about to end, I suppose, uh, in, uh, in the coming months, um, we've worked with KPMG, Newcastle United, Northumbria Water, Goldman Sachs, Bloomberg, etc. Um, a number of different topics, uh, finance sector, international career, future of work, supply chain, digitization, data visualization. But this is really only a small um, subsection of, of the actual guest lectures that have been delivered. Um, we've, we've done around 30 for the postgraduate um, courses this year. Uh, I think the other thing just to say as well is... Um, a lot of the times your lecturers will have their own relationships and bring them into the programs that you're working on. So although I'm giving a bit of an overview here, this isn't the full picture of all those different opportunities that you'll get. Um, quite often academics will, will source their own as well. Uh, so the next thing I wanted to highlight um, was our postgraduates. Ah, here we go. Right, there we go. Uh, the Postgraduate Sustainability Forum. So this is an extracurricular um, series of activities and events that are designed to um, provide you with an insight into the sustainable development goals and how they fit into the corporate world. Um, we we secure a number from from the corporate team's perspective. We secure a number of speakers, 
PwC, Parkvale Capital. We also work alongside other academic institutions like Monash University in Melbourne. So there's a whole series of different things that you can do as part of this. We really encourage you um, again to get involved. It's, it, it provides great insight and a really good grounding into sustainability topics. Um, we also run a case competition. Uh, this year it was with HSBC looking at how um, they could influence their client policies to be more sustainable um, alongside MBA students. So you have the opportunity of potentially winning a cash prize as part of that, but also it's just a great experience to, to work in a team and, and look at those um, genuine business challenges and seeing how you can support an, an organization like HSBC address those. Um, and just to, to highlight, actually, I think this has just changed in the last week or so, but we were ranked first in the UK for sustainable development by a times high. I think it's slightly down to fourth, but we're still very high uh, and still top 25 globally. Um, based on our uh, education impact rankings for sustainability. So something we're really proud of and, um, you know, we'll definitely encourage you to, to get involved in, in that side of things while you're here. Um, next thing to highlight, so events and collaborations with, with businesses. Um, we're actually based in quite an amazing location in Newcastle. The business school is part of the Helix site. Um, it was formerly the uh, Newcastle Brown Brewery, but it's now... Um, a sort of 24 hectare um, smart city location with a combination of innovative industries, top law firms, uh, academic institutions. There's all sorts of different really exciting businesses, a lot, a big biotech sector. Uh, it's all on our doorstep and we, we really um, are looking to build those relationships and make sure that the students while they're here have the opportunity to engage and interact with, with the Helix site. It's, it's really quite a unique opportunity for us. Um, as part of that, for the um, International Business Management Programme, we do an event where you'll hear from a variety of speakers based within the Helix um, and also get the opportunity to network with businesses and do a tour of the site. So um, it's a good opportunity to get to know our neighbours a bit more. And obviously, again, you know, there's a lot of fast growing businesses and um, businesses looking to recruit. So there's an opportunity from a careers perspective as well. Um, we also organise site visits and opportunities to see um businesses in operation so for example on the operations and supply chain management course we recently uh, organized a trip to Aska Noble's uh, world leading uh, paint manufacturing plant might not sound that exciting but it is actually one of the most advanced uh, manufacturing facilities uh, well for for that company uh, globally so they are the third largest manufacturer of paint in, in the world. Dulux is the kind of household brand in, in the UK. Um, and they have a facility not far from Newcastle where they produce 63 million litres of paint a year. So great opportunity for our supply chain students to really get an insight um, into how those operations work and what they are doing as an organisation to um, really refine their operations. Uh, and then the final thing to uh, touch on is practice-based dissertation. So we have a couple of um, programs where there's an opportunity to work on a project with a business as part of your final dissertation. So it's an international business management, global re human resource management. Um, you'll be placed within a business working in, in a team to address a, a real challenge that they have. Um, and again, I think it's a great thing to do for um, your career aspirations and, and understanding of how businesses operate and some of the challenges that they're looking to address. Uh, so, um, you know, they just listed here are a few of the topics that students worked on in this current academic year, but we'll, you know, source new opportunities for next year as well. Um, so I think that is the end of my section. Um, um, oh yeah, just one last thing to say, which is as a team, we are really responsive to opportunities and ideas. So if there's particular themes or topics that you're really interested in, um, please do get in touch. As Kirsty says, we work very closely with our alumni, so we do try and connect opportunities to, to hear from people who have progressed from the university into industry and, and bring some of that experience back into to your own learning. Um, and also do get in touch if you've sourced an opportunity to work with a business yourself. We're here to support and we can um, ensure that that goes as smoothly as possible. So lots of, lots of opportunities to work with us. Um, and that is the end. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Stephen. Um, I think I have just a couple more slides. Um, Stephen is going to stay with us until the end of the session. So if you have any questions, I can see that the chat is building up. Um, and if you have any questions that you'd like to ask to Stephen, then please do feel free to pick his brains about anything. Um, now, this next slide that you can see is generally around not only what is available in um, the business school, but also if you were to use the wider career service um, at Kingsgate as well. So it's, you know, this is not just about the opportunities that we give you from a, you know, from, from the meeting of the employers, the networking, the internships. It's also sort of kind of the basics, really. Um, you know, some people have never written a resume before if they've, if they've come straight through bachelors into masters. Um, so it's about, you know, what, what do different markets expect in a resume? I know some countries it would be appropriate to put all of your personal details in a photograph. Um, onto your onto your resume whereas here in the UK you know we absolutely wouldn't do that so it's about knowing what's appropriate um, for the different for the different markets that you're applying into um, you know is it appropriate for you to apply for for certain jobs do you have the skills that are required how to read through the different um, you know the different job adverts that are out there what what does the people spec say what are the expectations that the employer has in your experience um, you know the various different uh, you know opportunities to find jobs so we've got the online resources we've got the recruitment agencies how to use LinkedIn and um, there's the international student pathway um, the you know from from getting the graduate immigration route, for example, if you're interested in starting or growing an existing business, um, you know, then we've got the we've got the team that would deal with the entrepreneurial side of things. So um, can they put you in touch with uh, funding? Um, are there are there visas that you that are appropriate for you to be able to apply for to allow you to stay longer term in the UK? What would those visas be? Um, one to one coaching from from our team, but also from other external entrepreneurs um, and how their journey has taken place. Um, you know, the peer mentoring that you would that you would have access to, um, you know, is it is it is it right that your education finishes here? Um, do you want to move further into, say, research um, education? Um, you know, what, what is the, the appropriate way to apply for that? Different universities will, will require different things. You know, you, do you have a piece of research that you're interested in? How do I pitch that to an academic? What buy-in do I need? Um, obviously, you want to be able to, to show employers that you've got experience. Um, you know, we can help with that. The university is an employer of students, um, you know, so there's there's research assistant opportunities, there's ambassador opportunities, you could be a uni buddy. So these sorts of different things are shared with you during your induction week. But then, of course, there's the external opportunities um, that we have. So the internships, part time jobs in the region, um, volunteer work that you could do through the student union, for example. Um, and then we come on to the interview stage. So uh, have you ever inter interviewed before? Are you nervous? Do you know what sort of questions you're gonna be asked? Is there gonna be that testing? So psychometric testing is something that certain industries that would do, um, it might be group work. It might be that you need to do a virtual interview. If you've never done that before, it's a very different way of interviewing. Um, and then finally, sort of, it's, it's the careers event side of things. So what is it that we're gonna offer you um, for you to be able to really make grow those networks, build those opportunities, um, meet other people who are interested in the same thing as you, um, you know, do, are you, is there the opportunity to do an assessment centre that an employer themselves might hold so you get more of an idea of how it's going to look when you're actually applying for jobs. Um, I'd like to think that we've covered quite a lot of information in that session. Um, I've spoken at you and Stephen's spoken at you for 30 minutes. So I'm actually gonna um, give the floor over to you guys. Uh, Ruta and Lottie, I know, will have been keeping an eye on the conversation. And obviously we've got Miku as well, who is here to, um, to talk about uh, her experiences. Um, so I'm gonna hand it over to you guys. I'm gonna mute myself. I'm sure you've heard enough of me by now. Um, and we'll, we'll let you hold the floor. Fabs, I'm just going to quickly jump in. Um, 
I've had um, a direct message in the chat just to myself only. So I just thought I would read it out and see what yourself, Kirsty or Ruta would advise this student. Um, so they've said they've applied for the Masters in Global Human Resource Management um, and they want to know the career opportunities after the course and the starting salary. I think this is something we have briefly covered in the, in the um, presentation. Um, so I've just for myself, I'll answer initially. So I've had a look on our course page for the Global Human Resource Management Masters. Um, and if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a little section called Your Future. And you can see where previous students from this course have then gone on to work at the kinds of positions they've worked at in the companies they've worked at. So this can be, you know, for this course particularly, it says, you know, headhunter, recruitment coordinator, human resource consultant, human resource manager, um, and some of the companies include Microsoft, Lloyd's Banking Group, um, Accenture, Aviva. So some of these are more international companies. Some of them are local to the Northeast. Some of them are national to the UK. Um, so it really does vary on the types of positions with that course in particular, because you do gain quite a broad range of skills. Um, it probably be worth when you join us having a one to one with the career service and, you know, discussing what kinds of jobs you would be looking to go into what positions appeal to you um and as for the starting salary Kirsty and Ruta correct me if I'm wrong but it'll, I I would be inclined to say it varies quite a bit depending on where you go and depending on you know the the grade of role that mm -hmm. you join in absolutely no I've, you're, you're fully correct there Lottie um I'd say it depends on the country that you're looking at it depends on the industry that you're looking at um, it also obviously depends on the level that you're going into. So we have students who maybe have work experience um, and then they come in at a slightly higher level. Once they've done their master's, their starting salary, we would expect to be a little bit higher. Most students who've come straight through bachelor's into master's, um, you're going to be looking at one of the um, sort of mid-level beginner roles. Um, you know, our our starting salary for, for a beginner graduate, you're hoping to look at around 22 to 25,000 pounds in the UK. Um, obviously, if you go into London um, as a capital city, they do the London waiting. So you get an extra sort of percentage mark increase, and that is to allow for the extra expensive cost of living uh, somewhere like London. Um, but that sort of that comparison also would apply if you're going to a market uh, where the cost of living would be lower than the UK, for example. So you might compare a salary for the same job and it might look lower in a different country, but actually it's relative to how much you would be paying for the cost of living. So it's, you need to take into, considera into consideration that sort of thing as well. Um, but it, it does depend on, on the industry that you're going into. You know, we get asked people who are going into finance, for example, um, compared to someone going in doing an international business management program. If you go into banking and invest your salary is is likely to be significantly higher if you went and worked in London, for example, for one of the big financial companies, compared to if you were going into, um, you know, a, a graduate student role um, in 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 a general business environment. So you you do it's it's a very difficult comparison to make, um, but it's certainly you 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 know depending on what you do you're going to earn a reasonable salary as a, as a graduate. And I think that's what you need to remember that it's going to be as a graduate. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm just thinking before I come to you, Ruta, and double check how the chat's going, I think just maybe now might be a good time to ask Miku to give a little bit of, of insight in your experience as a student using the career service. If you could just give us a brief overview, you know, how have you used it? How have you found it? Just any kind of insight from a student perspective would be really great. Thank you. Uh, so hello, everybody. So again, my name is Miku Kapoishi, and I'm a student from Global Human Resource Management, MSc. So let me share some example from the great career service at the Newcastle University Business School. And then I especially found um, two points. Uh, career consultant conversation and also CV appointment are very, very nice. So the firstly uh, conversation uh, with consultant, we have dedicated, uh, I mean, uh, consultant dedicated to business school. 
And then, uh, so I often talk with Joe and Sian, and then both of them are very supportive. And then I started talking with them since the first semester. And regarding Joe, uh, she always confirmed like if I'm on the right track or not. And then she tries to clarify my direction and then also uh, which industry I may be interested in. She gives me great advice in terms of these. And then also Sian, uh, he's also very nice. Uh, like. He gives always um, practical advice and like, for example, how to write more attractive CV. And also he gives great uh, useful tips in terms of application. So I really feel like these two great supporters help me like what kind of career path that I can make in, you know, to establish my career. And I'm thinking to uh, start working in UK and then I'm from the other country, Japan. So uh, they are really helpful uh, for me to think about how I can start working in the UK, which is a which is a very different country from my country, and then also the second point is CV appointment service. As Christine mentioned, uh, we have a career uh, career hub at the main campus. I mean. Uh, the King's Gate. And then when I use carry, uh, CV appointment service, I go there and I talk with uh, the staff. And also I can use online me uh, online service as well. So I really enjoy both meeting styles and then work very well. And especially like uh, I like in personal uh, in person style because I can find like you know which point I can improve on my CV every time and then I often overlook or some points I even did notice and that I can improve my CV and I can see my great improvement every time. So I yeah I want to say I these two points are great and that's it for me. Thank you. Um, I hope that kind of helps and gives some insight um, for everyone in the session. Um, I'll just check with you, Ruta, because I can see you've responded to quite a few of the queries. So do you give me a bit of an update on what's going on in the chat and if we have any questions to be answered still? Uh, yeah, yeah. So definitely there's a few questions. Um, I've been answering a few questions to Prince, um, so you can ignore those. And the first thing we have in the chat is a question from Kshitiya. So shall I read it out? For yeah. Everyone? yeah, so um, they have been working in the maritime industry for several years as a navigating officer, and they've chosen the Master's in Operations Logistics um, program. Will they have any advantage when seeking employment in logistics and supply chain sectors with their professional background? Are there any partner companies um, involved in maritime industry where they may have employment prospects? Wow. So I personally would see if Kirsty would have any insight mm -hmm. in this or even Stephen potentially. Um, um, I would say if it was anything about um, corporate relations or any partner uh, companies, then perhaps Stephen might be the right person to talk to. Uh, when it comes to advantages around getting roles, um, then yes, certainly if you're, what you have to remember is when you're applying for a job uh, in whatever industry you're applying for, uh, you need to be able to relate your experience into into the you know the criteria that they're asking for. Um, and so, if you can show that you're meeting that criteria based on historical experience, but then you've also got um, a master's that you've undertaken in you know in that subject area, then you are going to be an, a more attractive um, candidate to that employer. And that's that's what the careers team, um, you know, are there to help you with. So like Miku said, um, you know, Kian is there to help her um, finesse her resume uh, so that it is more attractive for employers. Um, and that, you know, that the careers team would then do that for you. They would take your historical experience, look at what you've done, um, consider the masters that you're doing, look at the job that you're applying for, and they would help make you the most attractive person for that role. Um, I'm hand over to Stephen when it comes to, to any partner link. Uh, yes, so um, in terms of specific organizations, um, we do have a partnership with a company called Venator. They're a large chemical manufacturing company. They not obviously maritime specific in terms of their sector, but they do um, a lot of maritime transport. And we've actually worked on a project with them a uh, the year, the previous academic year around um, optimizing their 
sea transport and they presented some information about how they do that and um the students uh, got some insight into the to that aspect of the business which was causing them some challenges um we i off the top of my head i don't know of any others but i think as I, as i mentioned we're we're obviously responsive to requests so we can definitely look at um how we can engage in that sector and introduce somebody from that sector to to the work the university does um there are companies active in that in the northeast so i think it's um it would be um a definite opportunity for us Thank you, Stephen and Kirsty. Um, Ruta, are there any other questions to filter? Uh, yes, there are. Um, so Aditya asked, looking at the current situation, so the layoffs and probable recession in the UK, how do we see this change um, in one year? Will the job situation get worse or better compared to, to the current situation? And then the other question is, how successful have past MBA students been with um, securing visa sponsorship from companies after their MBA? So I'm happy to talk about those. Um, so Aditya, very good questions. Um, actually, we are in a, a kind of a unique situation where um, despite the fact that, you know, globally, uh, the world is, you know, is not looking as strong as as it has done in the past. And there are many, many countries that are going through recessions or difficult times. The UK is certainly not an outlier in that sense. Um, we also have a strangely positive situation where the job market is um, very strong and we don't actually have enough people to fill those jobs. Um, and so when it comes to our graduate students um, looking looking to find work and um, they are they are in a more beneficial position um, than they might have been had we you know been a few years earlier so I think when it comes to um, the recession it's not ideal from a financial perspective but the job market is actually quite strong at the moment um, and it looks to be remaining reasonably strong so I don't think that that's anything that you need to worry about um, when it comes to uh, the second question about students um, getting visas and sponsorship from companies. There's two very different things there. Um, you've got the graduate immigration route, which if you are a successful graduate, then you would automatically um, be able to apply for the graduate immigration route and you would be granted that two year visa. Um, when it comes to companies um, taking that person on post two year graduate immigration route visa, um, that is entirely something that the university does not have any uh, impact on whatsoever. There's a there's a list of around about 35,000 companies in the United Kingdom that have a license in order to um, to sponsor international students. Um, so that list is something that obviously you, you can make sure that when you are applying to a company that they do have that license in place um, and that'll give you a better opportunity for them to be able to sponsor you because there are certain things that companies need to have in place to be able to sponsor um, someone who is working for them to stay after the graduate immigration route. Um, but really the, you know, to be, to be brutally honest, uh, it's down to you to give the company a reason to want to keep you. Um, so, you know, it's about your performance um, with them as a company. Uh, so it's a very, very individual thing. We we do have uh, a lot of MBA students who have stayed, whether it's we've got some PGR students. Um, so they've gone on to do a doctorate, which still does count as work because they're working for the university. Um, we've had graduates come and do... Um, startups so we've got MBA graduates who've done who've got done their own business startups and then we've got those that have chosen to go home they've wanted to come and study the MBA with us with the with the the genuine plan of taking the that knowledge and information back to their country um either to you know to work on their family business or, or new companies that they've thought of um and so it's not really been an issue for them wanting to stay um, but if you do want to stay, then it's actually down to you as an individual to give that employer a reason to, to want to keep you after the, the graduate immigration route visa has expired. Fab, thank you, Kirsty. Um, Ruta, I'll go back to you for another question. Uh, yes, yeah, so 
Kirsty, I think you've answered a question here that you might have received privately, possibly. So I will leave that. Um, Parvez, apologies if I mispronounced your name there. Um, they've asked, how is the present job market for students who graduate from international business management? Um, I mean, That's you want to go to Kirsty? pretty much covered in what I just said mm -hmm. um you know it's we've got a strong job market at the moment um I would say very much it's about you utilizing the career service uh and and helping make yourself as employable and attractive as possible um you know to to employers post-graduation um, you know, the world The world is literally your oyster once you've graduated. It's about managing your expectations as to the level that you will enter into a company um, and, you know, taking the opportunities that you're given while you're here, certainly in, ac in academia for a year. Um, and then, you know, what what can you do to build that, uh, you know, the, the holistic resume um, probably is what I would call it. So it's not just I've got my I've got my bachelor's I've got my master's you know what sort of a person are you why why would you be a benefit to to that sort of um to that company um so the job market is good we can help you make we can help make you someone that people will want to employ yeah I think just as Kirsty said it's entirely up to you to take advantage of all of these opportunities that we've discussed today and there is an abundance of them, you know, not just at the business school, but at the wider university as well. But ultimately, you have to make the time and you have to go um, speak to people, um, you know, do internships, get work experience, um, network, build up your contacts. That is entirely on you. But if you do do these things, you will stand out from other graduates. Um but it is enti entirely up to yourself to make yourself employable. We will provide lots of support to help you get there, uh, but you will be the one writing applications, taking interviews, um, and you know securing those graduate roles. Um, right, so next question we've had from Stephen Tan. Uh, they say, hi, I am from Malaysia. I have worked in sustainability field for two and a half years. I will be enrolling myself in the um, Entrepreneurship, Innovation and Sustainability program this September. I would like to start my own business in the UK. Could you advise how a current student, someone like me, might start their own business in the UK? Uh, so I think I can probably take this. Um, so Stephen, we do have in the career service uh, a team that specifically works with students and graduates who are interested in starting their own business. It's called the Startup Team, and I will drop a link in the chat shortly that explains what kind of help the Startup Team might offer you. But essentially, they are there for people who want to explore, you know, their their ideas, establish an an active new service, use their skills and specialisms to create their own opportunities, and they really help you um, at every stage of of that journey, from kind of pre idea to launching your business and beyond. Um, so they provide uh, anything from just like generic advice, skills development all through to, to funding, um, mentorship, resources, uh, working spaces, and many, many more things. So I will drop a link for you to explore in the chat, but I will say that our startup team in the career service does really, really well. And Newcastle Uni students and graduates have lots of successful businesses. I think I remember reading somewhere that they generate um, like a really large sum of money, the, the total turnover for all of our student and graduate businesses every year is, is really large. So I know we tend to do quite well when compared to other universities in the UK. So if this is something that you're interested in, um, rest assured, there will be lots of support available to you. And I'm dropping the link in the chat for you to explore just now. So definitely have a look. Okay. I can see the next question is on accreditation. Um, is that correct? Yep, I think that is correct. So I'm happy to answer this one. Um, so the question is, how this how does the accreditation that the the business school holds um, help individuals in their employability? Um, and you know, how does it help with their CV? And what basically how does that impact you? 
The main thing I would say about the triple accreditation, which is Equus, Amber, and AACSB, which we hold all three of, um, our Equus accreditation has been renewed for five years, our AACSB has been renewed for five years, and I think our Amber one is also reviewed for the next few years as well. I'd have to double check that one though. Um, how this benefits you individually, it's something that I always tell students when I'm speaking to them, prospective students, because I often get asked, you know, well, what does that mean? What is a triple accreditation? It's important to remember that as a business school, lots of business schools have uh, one or two of those accreditations. It's only the top 1% of business schools globally that hold all three. And so by studying with us, you're studying with a triple accredited institution, which means that you can say that you have studied at a top 1% business school globally, not just nationally in the UK. So that's across, across the world. So I hope that answers. Stephen, if you have anything to add or curse if anyone else has anything to jump in, but that for me is kind of the main, the main selling point with the triple accreditation. It also obviously is a marker of our standard of teaching, standard of practice, kind of just as an institution, it, it shows our prestige because we are frequently evaluated for those accreditations. That means that, an, you know, an evaluating body will come in, they'll speak to our professional services staff, they'll speak to our academic staff, they will, you know, really do research into the school to, de to you know, determine that we're at a certain level to hold that accreditation. And because we are, your employer you know you let them know that you've studied at a triple accredited institution they know that your teaching the teaching you've received and the environment you've learned in is at a different level it's kind of at the top level that it can be anyone else want to add anything onto that <laughs> no that was perfect um lottie's covered that entirely perfectly mm -hmm. nice. so mm -hmm. do we have any other questions at all has anyone received any directly or anything like that I've had a direct message uh, about two seconds. I'm just going to find it. Um, just about the MSc in banking and finance and about the possibility of um, gaining experience in investment banks and the wider area of investment. So I've just answered that in the chat. And besides that, there are no further questions. Um, if anyone's got any last second questions, get them in now. Uh, you can also unmute yourselves and, and speak to us um, on here. I'm just yes. going to quickly pop a little couple of questions in a poll in the chat. It's just two, just how informative have you found this webinar and are you planning on joining us for any future webinars on different topics? So if you could take the time to answer those questions, I'd really, really appreciate the feedback. And please don't be shy unmute yourselves if you feel like you can it would be lovely to to meet or see you or speak to you before you're hopefully going to join us in September um now is the time I mean we've got Stephen here we've got Miku here does anybody have any questions directly for them at all we have experts for you I think we might actually keep a webinar to an hour long which was always the plan Crazy. Which is unheard of. Miracles happen. <laughs> well, Fab, if that's everyone's okay, if no one has any further questions, um, we'll leave it there. Uh, feel free, you know, to, if you can answer the poll, I'd really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, feel free to drop off now. Um, the recording of this webinar will be uploaded to our YouTube channel, which is just Newcastle University Business School on YouTube um, in the next couple of days. So keep an eye out for that. And then I am going to be sending out a, an email with the links for the webinars that have occurred in May and June at the end of June. The ones that occur in July at the end of July and end of August, same thing. So rather than bombard you with links, um, you will get those emailed to you throughout the summer. But if you want to find them sooner and you want to review it quicker than that, just have a look on our YouTube channel because they will be on there sooner than that. Um, Sorry. Oh. Oh, Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jessica. Um, sorry, I just asked the question. I, I was actually told to post it on the main chat area, but... Mm -hmm. I think I can just go straight by asking it right here. I asked about the opportunities for securing uh, chances to get an experience in investment banking. Mm -hmm. well, she said that she has answered, but I can see the answer. Maybe if we can just is, take me. Is that, I think, Ruta, I think Ruta has sent it, uh, the chat was to everyone. Um, if you were asking 
about the jobs. So it is, it's there in the chat, but I'll tell you what, Jessica, I'll just read it out for you very quickly. So um, we'll teach you how retail and investment banks function within the financial markets. Um, and you'll also understand the role of other financial intermediaries. Um, you'll study and apply theoretical frameworks in economics and finance. And the course will also encourage you to engage with contemporary debates on issues related to financial markets and institutions. Um, we're also going to provide you with the opportunity uh, to help you understand and critically analyze the role of commercial and investment banks within international financial markets, the functioning of financial markets and a wide range of investment management topics. Um, is that the answer? Is that what you were expecting to hear? Did that answer your question? I'm sorry. Yeah, to some extent, yes. I am satisfied. I'm I'll brief. tell you what, Jessica, I am mm. going to put our email address okay. um, into the inbox. So if you just bear with me. So this was this was on the beginning of the of the presentation, but I know that we don't um we don't always think to write these things down. So just for everyone in the um, uh, so far, um, that's our email address. That is our direct email address. So you are more than welcome to drop us an email. We will try and get back to you as quickly as we can. We do get a lot of emails every day. Um, but if you've got any specific questions that we've covered on the webinar that you might not have been sure of, or you might want something a little bit more for your own situation, or you maybe want to put something to Stephen or Miku, then we can also pass it to them and ask them to respond as well. So if you take a note of that email address um, and drop us an email, that might be the easiest way. And then Cheska, if you want to ask us like specifically what you were that what you were hoping to find out, we might be able to help you in a little bit more depth. Yeah, thank you very much. This will help. No problem at all. Um, hello, ma'am. Hello. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, I had a doubt regarding. I just completed my exams of my bachelor's degree and have applied for global human resource management, right? Oh, okay. So is it safe? Yeah. So can I just pay the deposit? Uh, like before my results come and then work on my documents stuff because I just completed my exams. So I'm expecting my results by June end or July first week. You don't need to pay your deposit first, so please don't worry. And also, you have plenty of time to um, to submit us your documents. So don't worry, um, don't worry about not getting your documents until June. That is that is perfectly normal. Um, you know, some of our students don't get them until until even later than that. What I would suggest that you do is if you've made your application already, mm -hmm. um, send us everything that you can that you already have, um, mm -hmm. upload all of that. Um, you can pay your deposit to secure your place and you yeah. will remain a conditional offer holder until you provide us with your academic transcripts. So um, oh if you... So the, actually, the thing is, like, I got the conditional of letter. I am just remaining with my SEM 6 mark sheet. Just now I completed my SEM 5, uh, like, SEM 6 exams. Okay. Then all the documents are submitted to the Newcastle University. Right. So have you got anything else that you need to send us? No, just the bachelor's degree mark sheet. Right. OK, so that's absolutely fine. So upload everything that, you've, that you can if you haven't already done that. You can pay your deposit, but you do have until the 1st of August to pay your deposit. Um, you will remain an offer holder, sorry, a conditional offer holder until we get that final piece of paperwork. But so long as you've given us everything that you can, if you want to pay your deposit, you can. Um, and then as soon as you give us your final academic transcript, then we will change you to unconditional and then we will be able to issue you with your CAS. Okay, ma'am, because the only concern is like about the securing of the seats, like this is a, something which is very a trending course, right? So I'm more worried that if I wait till my uh, mark sheet and if I don't get that seat, so I'm more concerned about the deferring of my admission. 
So that's the only thing I'm uh, planning to pay the deposit for the revenue. Yeah, and that that's fine. So the deposit will, of course, secure you a place on the program. So you you can do that. There would be a link within your um, applicant portal to be able to pay your deposit. Okay. Well, also, ma'am, I had a query. So the other day, like uh, in the last week, I had booked the university accommodation, right? The Newcastle accommodation. Mm -hmm. But I uh, I never I didn't heard any response from the university mm -hmm. yet about the confirmation booking or like some. Uh, application confirmation mail. So the other day, last night, I had sent the mail to Accommodation UK NCL. So I, I I believe, and I will let Ruta and Lottie correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you can't choose accommodation until you're unconditional. Um, and you will be invited to apply for accommodation at the appropriate point for you. But you are guaranteed a room as a postgraduate student the only thing that it that happens is that the um the the choice becomes a little bit more limited um if yeah, some yeah. of our if some of our buildings but don't don't worry about accommodation this is so we're going to be doing another webinar on accommodation um it's later already happened Kirsty. oh the accommodation sorry i apologize i was in india for this the accommodation webinar has already taken place but there is a recording about it so if you shruti are you on our facebook group um yeah i joined the facebook group as well the alumni right. group as well Okay, so Shruti, go on to the Facebook offer holder group and you will find the accommodation webinar. And I'm going to wait for Lottie to nod at me to say that she has, in fact, uploaded that. It is uploaded to the YouTube channel. It's not currently in the group, so I'm just going to drop a link to it in the chat because yeah. it's already on the YouTube channel. So Great. So th we can have a look at that. Yeah, you. so we've got the we've got the webinar for accommodation, so it might be worth reading or watching that because it's likely that will answer a lot of your questions just to correct you slightly Kirsty. yes i knew i was going to be corrected here <laughs> sorry so uh, shruti you don't need to have an unconditional offer to be able to apply for accommodation you can apply just when you have an offer and applications are no now open so you would just need to identify three uh, options for three different rooms on the application form mm -hmm. and um, it's not the sign on a first come first serve basis so you don't need to rush to get your application in um, mm -hmm. as long as you apply for accommodation by the 31st of July you were covered by that new student guarantee that Kirsty mentioned mm -hmm. so it means yeah. you're guaranteed to be offered a room at university accommodation that will be one of your uh, three choices that you identified on your application. Okay, so 31st of July, yeah. that's the only date that you have to worry about. And as long as you apply by then, you will have an offer for accommodation. That said, accommodation allocations won't happen until a little bit later in August. So I think mm -hmm. there is a date set for this. I think it's sometime mid-August. It's on the accommodation website but you will not find out what you've been offered until then, nor will you have to pay anything to kind of secure accommodation. So you just need to apply. And by applying, you are not committing to staying at any one of the sites that will be offered to you. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, ma'am. So I had a query. Now, as you mentioned about the three options that I have to choose in, right? So mm -hmm. I've done that procedure as well. Like I have to, I have got the offer letter. And I've chosen three of the options and all of those things are already done. The application has been submitted, mm -hmm. but uh, I have been, I, I did not get an allotment on which three of them I will be getting it. Yeah. So as I mentioned, Sruti, you, no one has been given a, a room offer just yet. That will not happen until a little bit later in August, about mid-August. Okay, so don't expect to hear back from the accommodation team until mid-August. Okay, that's the same for everyone. That's not just you. They just won't start start that process until then. Yeah, ma'am. But as you mentioned in the mid-August, right? So if I'm uh, booking any of the three, like I have done the three accommodations, right? And how will I get the information on which one is allotted to me? Like, because I have to pay the deposit by 31st July, right? 
the deposit is probably your tuition fee deposit. Not are you talking? Any accommodation yeah. deposit. Are you talking about your fifteen hundred pound deposit, Shruti? No, no, no. The accommodation uh, fee. And where, where, so, where were you asked to pay a deposit by the thirty first of July? So, uh, in that accommodation uh, mail that I had received. Uh, after creating an account on the Castle portal, right, for accommodation, I did those three options, right, yeah. for which uh, one was Carlton and one was Bob's Den and some of them. So I booked those three preferences. After that, I did not hear any uh, confirmation from the university side. And it was telling about you have to pay the deposit before 31st of July to secure your accommodation. I think that's but probably... That's probably your tuition deposit, Shruti. Um, that's not your accommodation deposit. You have to confirm. So there is a, there, so there, there is a deposit deadline for your academic tuition of the 31st of July. Um, and if you haven't paid that deposit, then, then we might assume that you don't want to be a student with us and therefore we won't okay. make you an accommodation offer so we want you to confirm that we want you to be that you want to study with us by paying your mm -hmm. tuition fee deposit so that is what you need to pay you can't pay an accommodation deposit until you've been told where you're going to live okay so oh. don't don't worry about that yet like you said you already planned on paying your tuition fee deposit so do that and then wait mm -hmm wait until August, middle of August, and right. then and then you should be informed which option you have been given for where you're going to live. Okay, yeah, and okay. the last doubt, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, just the last doubt. Okay. Um, uh, is it allowed that in student accommodation we can have a dual occupancy or something because I have no. my friends home? No. Okay. No, okay. so you, it, the only time you can do that is if someone brings their family and you have to apply for family accommodation and it has to be a family member. So you, no one can live in student accommodation apart from the family side of things. No one can live in student accommodation unless they're a student at the university. Um, okay, like in the studio rooms also, I, uh, I no. can't stay with a friend or something? No. Okay, okay, works. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, any doubt, I actually have your card because uh, you uh, had visited the India Fair and I had a talk with you personally. I recognize so your I voice, Shruti. Oh, yeah. yeah. So if I have any doubt, I just have your card. So should yeah. I ping you through the mail? Drop me an email, please do. And and like, I think one thing I'll say to everyone here is, you know, I'm happy to do Zoom consultations one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we've got a lot of webinars coming up. Obviously the accommodation one's passed. Um, but we do have an awful lot of webinars coming up and you will get invites to them because, you know, we understand that at this point of the year that there's a lot of queries about a lot of different um, processes. Uh, and we do try and sort of cover those because the same questions come up year after year after year. Um, so, Shruti, do go back. Uh, Lottie's put the link to the YouTube accommodation webinar. So do look at that because um, there'll be a lot of information in there. I think you might find really valuable. Um, I'm just looking to see, um, Prince, uh, you've asked something about your CAS. Now, the draft CAS um, will come to you at an appropriate time. Um, again, that is something that is automated. Um, you've had your confirmation of place. That's absolutely fantastic. The CAS will come to you. It's automated. It is up to you to make sure that all the information on that CAS is correct because you are going to use that to apply for your visa. Um, and from there, uh, you will be sent your, you will, you will approve the information on that CAS and you will get then sent your official CAS. It will be sent to you at an appropriate time. I don't have any dates and timelines. Um, it's there is no point in emailing and chasing for it because it is an automated process. Um, you also shouldn't worry because it will it will be sent to you. Um, so unfortunately, in this instance, it is just going to have to be patience. OK, um, I feel. Like that might be the last question.
that I've just responded Conscious to. Of time as well. So yes. if anyone does have any other questions, our email is just in that chat there. So if you just scroll up, it's nubs.recruitment at newcastle.ac.uk. So if I could kindly ask if anyone has any questions that they haven't had answered at this point, if you could drop us it via email, just because I'm aware of the time and we've run over quite a bit. So if that is okay with everyone, we'll end it here, if that's yes. all right. So what I'll do is, yeah, again, I'll drop that email in the chat just for a second time so you don't have to go up to find it. Please, please don't hesitate to reach out to us via email. We will be able to give you a more detailed response as well, and you'll have everything in writing. So it actually might be beneficial if you do have questions at this point, even after the webinar, to drop us an email, because that way you'll have everything confirmed. We can consult with you directly. Um, and then if you have any follow up questions as well, we've got an email chain right there. So if that's OK with everyone, I'm just going to pop this in the chat um, and then just say thank you to everyone for joining, really. Yes, thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank you, Miku, for your time um, and also Ruta uh, as well for coming along. Um, and Lottie, you've hosted this brilliantly. Um, and I think we can stop that recording and sign off. Fab. Uh, there we go.